that brings us to citizens wishing to speak. Anybody that would like to speak on any topic. Okay, if there's nobody, we will go to item five, resolution to appoint a county clerk for 2022. <coughs> Anybody have any prospect for that? Uh, we've been looking, but I just keep what we have. Uh, I guess that would be the default position. <laughs> I'm good. I'm good with it. So. Resolution to appoint a county attorney for 22. Preferably one that's healthy. I'm good with it. Resolution for 22 for the disposal of county property. That'll be whether or not y'all can go ahead and renew that. I'm fine with renewing it. Appointment of two representatives for the Gilmer County, uh, for Gilmer County on the Region 1 EMS Council. I don't have names for that. How do you say that? Schmicky. Schmicky. Mike Schmicky. Mike Schmicky. Terrence Evans. Terrence Evans and Mike Schmicky are the two. Requested for that. Okay. First, I'm good with it. Okay. Uh, resolution to approve the organizational chart for 22, which is attached in here. Um, anybody okay with that? You have to work with it every day, so whatever the pitch you have, you have a lot of people reporting to you, not only concerned. I don't want to build bureaucracy in you. Right. Okay. Resolution of the 22 county property vehicles and equipment inventory list to be approved along with the insurance coverage. Personally, I'm good with what we got there. Uh, we're showing a pool of $500,000. Don't drop that off. Like, I didn't notice that. That's the first thing. Four items down. Oh, yeah. And we. Okay, let's drop that off. We also talked about the jail deleting that. We've already done that. Yeah. Um, that was approved at the previous meeting, so. Okay, as long as we drop it from here. Mm -hmm. um, what we did was we kept liability on it, but nothing else. The event center of the golf course, is that center? Is it on here? Or whatever we did up there, I don't remember how much term. That was part of the golf course. We'll just check and we need to add it, I'm not sure. <clears throat> well, I'm looking at the golf course and I don't see that. Okay, I'll send it. Otherwise, I have no problem. <coughs> Resolution to fix and publish qualifying <coughs> On the equipment, mm -hmm. we have a, a semi-trailer that's unknown and uh, is, is it something still usable and who's responsible for it and so on? That would be uh, the road department. I'm sure, Jim, you've got to... Wait a minute. <laughs> the equipment... We are the depository, we're the junkyard for everybody. And we're not 
necessarily responsible for everything that is uh, sitting out there. Well, everything uh, should be gone except for the two fifty-three that trailers. From what I understand, I don't know. I, I have I have seen the list, so I can't. We're going to try to get those. Uh, no. uh, no, 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 the 53-foot trailers, we, we use them for storage. Okay. Well, Ronnie, said we try to get rid of Ronnie Chadwick said that? Well, then he told me something, didn't he? Okay. Um, I'm okay. <laughs> if we need them, then that's fine. Um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't buy <clears throat> That's not this. These are two 53-foot enclosed trailers that uh, were bought by uh, uh, former chairman uh, Sam, and uh, we use them. They got they got material stored in them right now. Okay. Uh, we they've never been on the road. They they're not even road worthy. Yeah, just storage. <coughs> They're just mostly used for. Do we even need to enter them? I would. Thank you, Jim. Resolution to fix and publish qualifying fees for public offices to be filled in the upcoming election for 2022. There will be three qualifying fees to be set. <clears throat> First one will be for the board of commissioners chairman. That will be set at $2,550.71. For post two commissioner, that will be set at $459.13. And for Board of Education, that will be set at $144. Everybody okay with this? I'm good. Okay. Discussion of possible action supporting reform to Georgia's annexation mm -hmm. dispute resolution law. This is a request that we got from ACCG and the sample Resolution is uh, in your book. It makes sense to me. Yeah. I'm pretty sure I'm good with it. Okay. Discussion of possible action of a law maintenance agreement for 22. This is something that. Uh, Right now he's saving us one person in the maintenance department. So we feel like it's a uh, very cost efficient thing to do. Discussion and possible action of site and bed agreement. Keith Kaufman, do you want to enlighten us on this one? Good morning. Good morning. So what we have is uh, it's a contract with site med, which is uh, NFPA 1582 provider for physicals. So in years past, 
and up to current, there has been no physicals for firefighters uh, with fire rescue, and it's kind of it's a mandate through NFPA that we do so. Uh, we applied in 21 for a grant. Uh, we were awarded $55,000 through assistance to firefighter grants, and based on that money, we're uh, identified SiteMed as our uh, vendor that we would like to use, and we should be able to pull two years worth of physicals out of this based on the 55,000. We'll be at about 22,000 per year, so when we get to 2024, we'll probably need to look at the budget for this. And what they do is they come on site, they do two days of blood draws, uh, they come back about three weeks later, two days worth of physicals, which is stress test, um, they screen for cancers, for females and males, and they also do uh, EKGs. So pretty extensive. So it's really a, a 5% match for us, so it'd be about $1,000 uh, on a Gimmer County uh, grant that we have budget. Any questions on that? SiteMed is a local vendor uh, on a Marietta. Uh, our other vendor that this quote was on a mission, I believe. So, so um, think about down the road beyond the grant. <clears throat> We're not presently required to have physical, you're saying? We have not performed them. We should be. Okay. Uh, this, um, I think, in the last year, firefighter deaths due to cancer have overtaken uh, stress-related cardiac deaths. And part of this physical does <coughs> relate to identifying any early cardiac issues through EKGs and stress tests. And we also test for ovarian cancer, uh, prostate cancer, and uh, colon cancer as well. But I understand that we are mandated to do these we are. tests. So. Yeah. We're mandated to do all the tests that are shown here uh, X-rays we could probably do after the initial. Uh, you can do certain things by age, like every five years. You, know, you have to do certain things. A PSA were required to do that. Or I'm getting Not a requirement, but a recommendation, and it, it only comes in at uh, $18 for a colorectal screening. Uh, $30 for ovarian cancer screening and $25 for prostate. I have no problem with that, but, yes. but with it not being a requirement, we're not doing this for other county employees. No, sir, this is mandated through NFPA, which is fire. But, but I thought you said these are not, PSA is not mandated, right? For fire rescue, uh, to my knowledge, not mandated, but highly recommended because cancer is one of the leading causes of firefighter death. So it would be $300 to perform um, the ovarian cancer screening for the female staff, uh, $875 to perform the uh, PSA, and then $810 for the colorectal. No, I don't think the money part of it is what your concern is, though, is it? Uh, no, the money part, except once the grant ends. Right. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I was a little concerned. With are we going beyond what really is required and not being able to do it for other county employees who also have cancers? Yes. Maybe not, not as great a risk. I, PSA, I, I don't know what the percentage is, firefighters versus other. I don't know. Uh, I can find that information out if you would like. Uh, well, it's just something uh, worth looking at. Yes, sir. Um, if it's something not required, maybe <coughs> if we're not doing it for everybody, maybe we shouldn't be doing it just for fire. I would recommend just based on stats through either the International Association of Firefighters or NFPA uh, with the leading cause of firefighter death in America and the world being cancer related in various forms, uh, esophageal, um, lung cancer, prostate, you know, things of that nature. Uh, the amount of carcinogens that they're exposed to on fire uh, the bunker here traps some of that in into areas of the groin in those areas. So, and, and I think you may be hitting on it when you talk about the amount of 
carcinogens that they're exposed to in a fire. Yes, uh, it's a very toxic environment. I mean, when you're going in, you have your modern day synthetics and furnitures and styrofoams and stuff like that that burn. They just put off really highly toxic uh, amounts of carcinogens. Uh, we have extractors in the station, so after a fire, uh, they can actually wash the gear, get the carcinogens out. Uh, we swap out their hoods when they put their hood on because there's skin cancers uh, around the rise with firefighters as well. So we have proactive methods in place to help reduce it. Uh, this right here just helps us identify things early on. <coughs> I would much rather identify somebody with the early stages of cancer than to find out down the road when they're stage four and yeah, aside from the cost and insurance and the amount that that puts on the employee and the, you know, us as well as employers, um, early detection is the, the biggest key to surviving cancer. And, and I see that with the lungs and esophageal. Yes. I'm not I'm sure PSA would come into it, but I don't know. And there are other tests that, I mean, there's a whole, I, I can give you, send you the email, that they test for, that they allow the individual employee to pay for individually on the side as well, when they come in. I think uh, due to the circumstances that our firefighters come across different than other company employees, I applaud you for reaching out and getting the grant and appreciate you saving us for your budget, $55,000 for two years of testing. Yeah. Um, I, I don't have a problem with it because I think you know, maybe you can get another grant or you can work it into your budget. Yeah. We, we have applied for phase two of this grant is a health and wellness grant to where they will provide us equipment for the firefighters. Uh, there's mental health uh, peer counseling as well. And there is uh, what they call peer fitness trainers, where we actually send people and they learn how to train other people. And we mandate training every day where they have to rotate in and go through like an hour of physical fitness. So trying to get healthy, trying to get everybody to where they need to be physically to, to do the job. And you know, anytime you have a healthy employee and they're in better shape, they've lost weight, and they're gonna use less sick time, have less injury. So that's kind of our approach. Uh, it's more of a, it's a culture change. We have to change the culture of getting people used to, you know, exercising. And you know, some people are take the self initiative to do that. <coughs> others do not. So it, it's a cultural change that you you have to to do. But you got to start somewhere. You know, and I think a few years down the line, you'll see a, a healthier, more productive fire department at very little cost to uh, the board and the fire. land use ordinance. One of the things that has come up a number of times in these meetings and seems to be, as I'm kind of looking at um, the infrastructure and the things that, uh, you know, we, we did the um, Anyway, um, uh, with the moratorium, it was to try to look into any number of different things, particularly as it relates to infrastructure. Um, and what seems to be sort of coming up uh, in all directions when we look at infrastructure is things like, um, particularly on these very large, large subdivisions, um, 
if you've got a subdivision that's going to put hundreds, maybe even a thousand or more homes in an area, that's going to cost the county a lot of money because we are going to have to then provide fire protection for those homes, which very possibly could mean building a fire station uh, out in that area and, and so forth. Uh, we also have the issue of uh, stormwater runoff uh, <clears throat> that we've discussed a number of times but haven't really done anything about. So I'm just, uh, I just want to ask the question, uh, should we then consider putting some uh, regulations in place in the subdivisions that, depending on size, um, infrastructure considerations have to be made uh, in terms of assistance for providing fire protection, uh, perhaps water, those sort of things. Well, that, that would be one way of doing it. Uh, we can look at it on a case by case and say, you know, X number of homes are going in here. That means there's going to have to be a fire station, and we calculate the cost of that to be this amount for the land, this amount for the station. You know, maybe we would expect them to donate the land for it. Maybe if it's big enough, we would expect them to provide a station. Um, impact fees are easier they're just kind of set and you know they are what they are and you can collect them uh, this would be a little more difficult in that it would be on a case-by-case -case basis um, and i don't really care which way uh, i just uh, right now infrastructure is a big problem we have on the subdivisions um, we don't have proper infrastructure for a lot of them and, you know it's based on where they want to put them we don't have a lot of uh, infrastructure, but I just hate to see the county in a position where uh, somebody is developing a huge subdivision, so now we've got to build a fire station and buy the property and so forth. Uh, and fire station is just one example it could be. Uh, any number of things, school system may have something they want to say about that in terms of uh, some assistance that the school system might need. I'm just asking the question at this point. It might be worth thinking about. Uh, I'm certainly not prepared to go into it right now. Okay. I saw it on the agenda, but didn't know what it was. Uh, <coughs> the taxpayers, the people who purchase in the subdivision become taxpayers. Mm -hmm. um, a lot to look at. Stormwater is addressed now, isn't it, uh, through uh, EPD? It is addressed through EPD. We don't have anything specific in our ordinance regarding it. I know David has mentioned several times that we need to address that. Uh, I wouldn't want to, to get into it just that unless we're looking at a more uh, a broader spectrum. But, um, the thing about the become taxpayers is as long as the taxpayer's bill of rights is in effect and we have to do the rollback rate, yes, they become taxpayers, but by the time we put in the rollback rate, we're not getting a lot more money for them, if any. In essence, it, it kind of just lowers the taxes for everybody else so that in the end it all comes out about the same. Uh, now there's Except for the revaluation re we do every three years. Yes. So that, that, right. that is exempt from taxpayer bill of rights restriction, correct? Yes. Uh, I, I, so there would be some, there is, there is some benefit. Yes. Even though we roll back the millage rate, if the assessment goes up, <coughs> uh, well, so the assessment can go up some depending on how much military rolls back and they still pay the same thing. But if this assessment goes up enough, then they'll pay more. Am I right, Sandy, that 
revaluations is a way that the budget, the, the taxes are increased. That's not um, somewhat. Okay. I wanted to discuss it, uh, certainly. Well, if, if I might say, uh, Commissioner, uh, what Chairman Parrish is saying, and I agree, I have been a proponent of this for 20 years, is that the demand that is put on the county <laughs> the uh, you you have done some things in the amendments uh, to the uh, land use ordinance with the master plan now required and, and things like that but the infrastructure uh, that is required to serve these and uh, Director Casera and I have talked about it. Uh, a lot of us department heads have talked about it. It's a need. You and 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 they're expecting the service and the schools are the same way. You don't receive that money. Uh, you you can't capitalize uh, the infrastructure requirements properly. You wouldn't receive the money back for 20 years. Uh, and I know impact fees are a bad word, and you can call them anything that you want, but if a developer is coming in, making a significant impact to the infrastructure, it is nothing but fair that they participate on the front end, and the taxpayer, the existing taxpayer, is not burdened with the requirement to build that infrastructure for them. <laughs> now that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. I have for 20 years. <clears throat> and I, I'll be happy to, uh, you, can, you can see communities in Tennessee, North Carolina, and in Georgia around us uh, that this is the mechanism that they use because it isn't fair to the existing taxpayers to have to pay for the infrastructure and then sit there and wait for 20 years for the county to recover the cost of it. It should be on the front end. And I'll be happy to debate with you. Jim, I have a question. Do you have any experience with what Charlie is saying about her development. I don't know how. Uh, no, I I have seen Carlina. I, I was a city planner. Right, yeah, uh, that's what I'm asking. And uh, <laughs> it, it's a case by case basis. Uh, the the master plan that goes into the development, which you have now closed that loophole. Uh, uh, that's that's where it comes out. That's where and and, and you do you can set thresholds that if it reaches a certain number of lots, you could use the, uh, uh, the uh, uh, state requirement for the uh, DRI uh, or whatever, but we've got, right now, we've got three developments within the county that are going to be tremendous impacts to the infrastructure of your town. And you all know where they are. Uh, but yeah, uh, you can set thresholds. And when it reaches that threshold, then uh, then they, the developer uh, helps pay. Mm -hmm. The Water Authority has impact fees and there are certain reporting requirements, so they're not prohibited, but they do have that. Yeah, absolutely, Hubert, and you sat on that board, so you 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 know uh, it. it uh, uh, and and it can be a case by case. Uh, you can set thresholds, but uh, you know, I, during my absence, I understand that it uh, uh, was uh, denied, but we. Dealing with uh, 
uh, track and impact on Yukon Road for a development out there. And uh, those things, you, you've got to, uh, you've got to do the uh, pre-planning uh, for stuff like that if, uh, without shouldering the, uh, uh, the taxpayer to provide. When you, say on, when you say on a case-by-case -case basis, uh, I'm not sure what you mean by that. Well, what I, what I mean, Hubert, is that uh, it, up to a certain point of, of lots or new residences, you know, the county can probably uh, handle it. Uh, but when it reaches a thousand lots, Okay, you uh, mean that's not case by case. You've got to specify what it is. Well, Otherwise, that's why I say you set threshold. Right. Yeah. You set the case by case. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know. Well, I'm not trying to speak for the chairman, but I think that's what he was referring to. Well, I, I, to me, and we're not talking about case by case basis. If somebody is uh, proposing a subdivision in an area where we have sufficient fire protection, there's a station uh, located uh, nearby and it's not going to be an impact on us, then that we wouldn't have to do anything. But if somebody wants one way out where we don't have any fire protection and we would have to have a station, then that might be a consideration. And that's what I would think of when I say on a case-by-case -case basis. In some cases, uh, assistance for fire protection might apply, and in other cases, it may already be there. So. Uh, I think you'd have to look at it all the time individually in that regard. That becomes subjective, and that's where you run into a problem. Yeah. Well, that's, that's true. That would be dangerous. Yeah, from fire rescue's perspective, or, or at least for me, uh, anytime you can have any type of infrastructure before something goes in, whether it is a supplied water system for hydrants, or even if it's static water supplies that are required to put 10,000 gallon tanks at multiple locations throughout their subdivision. Uh, impact fees do work. Uh, I came from a place where they actually use impact fees. Uh, they use that money for uh, purchase of fire apparatus equipment or the building of stations. And you spoke of maybe a subdivision if it's big enough uh, donating the land, and then you take impact fees to help build the station with no additional costs to the taxpayers. And then it's just a matter of funding uh, personnel or, you know, depending on where it's at, whether it's staff or volunteers or career personnel. Uh, quick math, 200 residents at $5,000 is a million dollars. And that goes a long way towards uh, yeah, even helping to put in a hydrant system, water supply system build a station or supply a fire truck uh, without additional cost to taxpayers. Uh, I really don't think somebody coming in from Atlanta, or the people that are building homes, uh, are going to, depend on what you do, if you set an impact fee, that they're not gonna build just because it's a small impact fee. Based on the price of the home, they're probably building. Just my opinion. Um, we're all for any type of capital improvements that can be made and not necessarily have the burden on the taxpayers. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Uh, to your point, I agree that uh, we should take that to get us to follow order. So if it's done, it needs to be down on paper. Right. With these systems. Good morning, Commissioners. Uh, I, I really appreciate this topic being brought up. Um, it, it covers such a large spectrum of <coughs> service needs, not only from, from Jim's perspective, if you look at it from a law enforcement perspective, the need for more service because there will be more calls. Um, I, I really would like to see this move forward and, and developing some type of working group to be able to provide information to the board uh, on, on what we feel is, would be uh, some of the concerns that way instead of just kind of spitballing and, and throwing things on the wall and see what sticks we can provide a, a group of, of uh, people can get together and provide some of these details to you to be able to see what the concerns are and, and maybe help you make a, a better decision for the county how would y'all feel about having a i hate the word committee but for, for having a group to get together and uh, kind of hash that out and make recommendations to us. If 
I certainly, I don't know that I'm against it. I certainly would like to have um, representation. I, I am for impact fees, and I have been for a long time. We just didn't ever, the board didn't want to bring them up or talk about them when we were doing ordinance before. So um, I do think it's something that we need, and it's, I'm thinking for the larger subdivisions that really have the bigger impact, um, like Jim's referring to. So. Um, however we go about that, um, really having professionals uh, in our public safety have say in it, uh, roads, I, mean, I feel like it could be sort of a committee of professionals in-house, but then, um, anything we can learn. Certainly we need to spend some time educating ourselves and going and looking the reasoning behind having them, and also I'd like to speak to some of the builders. Um, if if we do that, and we have the um, um, professional folks on this in-house, I think that builders would have to be represented. Mm -hmm. in that. Yeah, me too. <clears throat> I don't object to learning more about it, certainly. I think it has to be a broad uh, a broad group. I don't know how they work, I don't know how we appoint them, how they're selected. Um, Subdivisions that uh, were in progress before the moratorium. That uh, you know, we've got a number of of uh, home sites that are coming down the pack. But whatever we do here would not affect them because they're already in progress. So I'm not looking at any one particular uh, subdivision or development. Don't take the rush, you know. Well, that yeah. It's not something that you can do overnight. I mean, it it, uh, it it needs some time and requires some study. You know, not a rush, but it needs attention. It needs to be worked on. Yeah, but we can uh, take what time we need to do it right. We're not trying to address a specific emergency. Maybe you could put the moratorium while y'all work on it. How do we set up a group? How do we go about that? I have a problem with trying to find out more. Who do we include? Um, well, make sure we don't exclude someone who needs to be included. Yeah, I think what we would have to do is we would have to categorize um, the professional fire and law folks, the builders. Uh, and citizens who are neither. Um, the thing that we would have to avoid or else we'll never get anything done would be we couldn't have, for lack of a better word, zealots <coughs> on there who oh, sure. are, you know, hardwired um, <clears throat> and non-negotiable. Um, Beyond that, I really had not thought about that. Uh, An impact fee would be assessed 
against the developer. Is that correct? The uh, commissioner, yeah, the, uh, the impact, the, the, if you want to call it an impact, the, would uh, be the developer's contribution to providing the infrastructure that his or her development uh, requires uh, and, and the services. Uh, you know, Keith and, and Daniel, and, uh, theirs is not much, uh, so much physical impact uh, other than stations and, and equipment and stuff like that. But uh, uh, yeah, it would, it would be the uh, developer. And it does not have to be, I've seen it in different places where uh, it does not have to be 100%. It could be, you know, the, the county uh, paying a portion and the developer paying a portion. There's, there's many ways to uh, uh, develop, but you got to get started because I don't think it's going to get... I read the rest of that question. The builder is not the one who's assessed... Well, the, when you say a builder, a builder is not really the one that's doing it. A builder right. is the one that's building it. I would them. see this being... I'm sorry, Jim. Yeah, it's, uh, to me, I, it's more developer. I would see this being that it's something that the developer would be responsible for when the subdivision is created. A builder who is building within that subdivision should not be right. uh, affected by it. Right. Correct. So, I'm trying to think of the committee that was running. Except they're going to object to it, I can promise you. I'm sure. Yeah. Um, that would be, that's the tough thing is who put them. It's not just the, let me go beyond some of the things we're talking about. If you have more parcels, the tax assessor is affected. So it, it spreads out. Yeah. And maybe it's not impact. Maybe we think of some other mechanism that I'm open to talking about. <laughs> we will. Uh we will have that. Uh, we'll just say that's a discussion.
the roads on various roads on the list and seeing you know what we can come up with to kind of match that money. What uh, what I thought we were doing is uh, keeping Elmig to the trip service treatment the, where we we the road department would be doing uh, that work and then we were going to contract out uh, through the capital budget for actual hot mix paving the way we did this year. Uh, and as I understand it, we have about a million and a half right. uh, set aside this year. Uh, I, am, I am working on a list right now for the contract paving. Mm -hmm. uh, Howard Simmons Road, Mulkey Road, Legion Road, uh, uh, but I'm not prepared to give that total list to you today uh, because I didn't know until last week how much money we would actually be doing. Is would tomorrow night be sufficient time? Or, uh -huh. What about tomorrow night? Would that be tomorrow sufficient? Tomorrow night? I, I could probably have something together for you tomorrow night. Okay, because all we're doing here today is just yeah. discussing it. So. Yeah. Uh, but if that's the direction that we're going to continue to go, which I, uh, I, I love. It's, uh, it's a good direction for now. Uh, I think so. We can't always rely on having a million or two million dollars to be set aside. Understand. And when that time comes, I don't want us to say we're prohibited from doing any contract well, paving with the only money. And, so. and one of the things that uh, I want you all to understand uh, uh, Elmick, lo local maintenance and improvement grant, you're not limited to force account work with that. If you wanted to contract all of it, uh, you can. Uh, but uh, it just it just depends on how we want to approach it. But I thought we were going to continue to approach it the way we did last year. And I'm fine with that this year because we have the funding we can do that this year. Okay. I just don't want it. I don't want us to make it a hard and fast rule. Okay. Well, every year, every year is different. Yeah. You know. yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, we're you. I'm okay with that. And there's some roads that are on the road paving list that have been added. Well, I haven't seen those. Well, one of the things for tomorrow, uh, should be on tomorrow's agenda, is to approve uh, the road paving list additions. I think we had said we were going to do that either just once or twice a year. So <clears throat> there's a group of roads, uh, and these are, are roads that have been requested. Uh, I will go ahead and email you a copy of it when I get back to the office. Uh, they will be proposed to be put on there. Yeah, I mean, we would add those those roads to this list, right. and uh, and then we would work from there. Well, back in September, we added Pleasant Valley Road to the meeting, hmm. and it's not on the list. Oh, the list needs to be updated. Yes. Well, we're working on Pleasant Valley right now. Not Pleasant Valley, no. But it's been on Elmix, uh, oh, that's a mistake. It, it is actually Pleasant Valley and not Old Pleasant Valley. Pleasant Valley is a whole Pleasant Valley is paved. Do we need to verify and update the list? Okay, first. But if I could see the list that you all are going to consider adding to tomorrow night, but then we can incorporate that in. I'll, I'll even tell it out to everybody. Okay. Okay. I have one or two of them ahead also. Okay. I'll give that to you. Yeah. Okay. Anything else? It's terribly important that we get this done soon because yeah. Jim needs to start the bidding. Uh, now, and, and Hubert and I have talked about it, and Charlie and I have talked about it. 
Uh, what, I, what I would like to do, different from what we did last year, is we use January and February as the uh, time to do our road selection, our measurements, our specifications, our advertisement, and everything. In March, we would be ready to award a contract and give a contractor uh, the, uh, the work to proceed. I've had two calls since I've been sitting here uh, from uh, contractors that are asking about it. So, so Mark and I, if you're gonna have a list of what you propose to pay. What I propose contract pay. Right. Yeah. So we got a chance to look at that. Tonight. I'll try to get it to you today. But we, we might, we can debate it at that point. No, I mean, uh, this, this is not, this is an open thing. I mean, okay. if, uh, if you all say, well, Jim, you know, let's, let's not do this one, let's do this one. Uh, I mean, uh, y'all are the bosses. Jim, we're going to have to have a list of building too, aren't we? Because what's our deadline for uh, getting approval on the building submissions? Well, now, I understand during my absence that you all did a 2022 LME list. Has it been submitted to? Okay. So we, we've got to get that submitted. But, so are you okay with that one? Well, uh, my, my question, some of those roads that are on that 2022 are not on this list. They will be once we... Once you do it, <laughs> once, once we do that tomorrow night, they will be. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, sure. How could that be? I, I'm, I'm in the catch up. I'm in the catch up. It's me. This is government that can't happen. I'm, I'm trying to catch up for two months. Oh, we were So we're going to get a new list. Yeah. We're going to get the new lists. Yeah, we're we'll. New lists. Yeah. Okay. Right. <laughs> okay. Okay, thank you folks. We appreciate it.